Okay, so I heard about this rabbi who went to the you know, horses racing tracks and he wanted to bet some money. So he went to the first race, he bets a little bit of money, and of course, pff, his, his horse ended last, so he lost the money. So he tries again on the second race. Same luck, nothing happened. Before the third race, he noticed that it was a Catholic priest that walked into the races. He went into a horse who was one of the long shots, right? Not a favorite. He came close to the horse, touched the horse head, whispered something into the horse ear. And then that horse, even though he, it was a long shot, ended up first. So the rabbi said, okay, I think there's something going on here. So for the next race, he noticed that the priest went back into the races, into the tracks, back to another horse, and again, touched the head and whispered something into the horse's ears. So the rabbi said, this is my opportunity. So he runs to make a bet to that horse who was also a long shot and he won. Okay, it says, this is my day. So he keeps following this priest, race after race, because the priest was going before every race to one horse, touch the horse head, whisper something and the horse will win. So eventually it was the last race of the day. The rabbi said, this is my one and only opportunity. He goes to an ATM. He takes out all of his savings and he waits for the priest and the priest goes to the tracks he goes to a horse touches the horse head the horse ears and the hooves whispers something into the horse's ears and then he leaves so the rabbi runs into the window bets all his money into that horse who was actually a long long shot the race starts, and that horse falls dead in the middle of, a ho of the race. The rabbi was furious. He looks for this priest all over. He found it. said, what have you done? I've been following all day. And every time that you will give a blessing to a horse, they will win. And when I put all my money on this one, it lost. And the priest said, you see, <laughs> that's the problem with you Jews. You don't know the difference between a blessing and the final rites. <laughs> so, I want to talk to you today about the power of blessing. <laughs> the power of blessing. Yeah, I know. Let's try to stop laughing for a minute. Because the blessings <laughs> in Judaism are very serious matter. I believe that we are where we are today in part thanks to blessings that we received during our lives. And when I say blessings, is the blessing in the biblical sense. It's when, when you bless someone or when somebody is blessed on the Torah, you will see that it's always somebody saying something, th something to somebody else. And those words said into that somebody else becomes a little prophecy of that person's future. So in Judaism, we're encouraged to say up to 100 blessings a day. We should be people who will embrace the concept of blessing and will be, we should be happy to be able to bless other people. The same way that we were blessed. So those words that they were said to us became inspiration and that inspiration became action and that action brought us where we are. And sometimes we have to stop and think about the power of words. I say this all the time. Words are extremely powerful. When you say something, that word becomes a seed that you are planting into somebody else. And when you are planting that seed, you are giving life into those words. But the problem is, sometimes we can say nice things to other people, and that's amazing. When we say words of encouragement, when we acknowledge somebody else's talents 
and gifts and skills. And we encourage those people by blessing them with our words. That's an amazing thing. But words could also destroy. You can actually, with one word sometimes, destroy somebody else's future. You can destroy somebody else's dream. You can destroy somebody else's projects. With one word, with one wrong word that you may say into somebody else. One word could bring life, or one word could be the seed of failure. One word could poison somebody else's future. You see, in this week's Parsha, towards the end, chapter 24, I believe, there is a very interesting story. You will read about two Israelites that they were fighting. But in the middle of the fight, one cursed the other using the name of God. Moses was in shock. But he didn't know what to do. I guess this never happened before. Somebody using the name of God to curse somebody else. So that person who cursed was put into jail until Moses would have a chance to ask God what to do. And God said, because this person cursed using my name, that person should be put to death. It sounds like a harsh punishment for something that somebody said. But you see, I have this little theory about every time the Torah mentioned this punishment by death or the destruction of an entire nation and so forth. I believe that that has to be taken as an allegory as to something that is so bad that it should be eradicated. And of course, in the language of the Torah, I said that should be punishable by death. But take the concept. Don't take the story as a factual story, but take the truth behind that story. And the truth, the principle that the Torah is trying to teach us here is that cursing is bad. Saying something bad about somebody else is very bad, especially for a Jew. Let's think about it. We all come from Abraham and Sarah. And remember what God said to Abraham? God said to Abraham, I am blessing you, and you shall be a blessing to others. We come from that seed, so we cannot go around saying negative words to others. A Jew should be one who is constantly blessing somebody else, notice, noticing the goodness, the talent, the gift, the skills on other people, and encouraging them by blessing them. And I understand, sometimes we are so into our routines that we don't take time to stop and to bless somebody else and to say nice things about other people. That's life. We are busy. We have so many things to do. But it's even for that, there is a very interesting story in this Parsha. When the Torah is making a list of all the holidays, and in between the list of holidays, there is something that seems to be unrelated to the festivals. In between Shavuot and Rosh Hashanah, there is this little halakha, this little law, that if you're a farmer, you have to leave the corners of your fields to the poor. And when you are collecting your harvest, whatever it falls, you cannot go back and pick it up. You have to also leave it there for the poor, which is very interesting. The rabbi said, why is this in between Shavuot and Rosh Hashanah? And they say, because on, on Shavuot, Actually, between Pesach and Shavuot, all what we do is to pray for our income. The harvest is coming up. So it's praying for me, 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 me. On Rosh Hashanah, it's also me, 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 me. We are praying for our lives. So in between those two, God made a pause. And he said, when you are so concentrated in, our, in yourself, Take a break, look around, and see ways of doing something for somebody else. What an amazing concept. What an amazing principle for a Jew to learn that we have to be the one 
blessing other people, and we should be the one stopping, even in the middle of our routine, and to do something good for somebody else. And that's something that sometimes we don't do. We think about it, but thinking about it doesn't take you anywhere. You have to take it to the next level. You have to be able to say it, but even better, if you can, you, sh you should be able to do something about it. And I'm telling you this because this last week I've been thinking a lot. You probably receive a letter or you saw it online about our dear friend Rabbi Matthew that is living. I still can't believe it myself. I was in shock because I knew that, but it, it's, and it brought so many memories from the time that we met each other of so many years working together. And I feel that I haven't said enough. I thought a lot of time about how great it is to work with my friend and colleague, Matthew Leibel, but I didn't say it enough. And I feel terrible because I love working with this man. Hmm. I've learned so much. And believe me, I've been in the synagogue world since virtually after my bar mitzvah, sharing pulpits with so many rabbis, cantors, you name it. And I never had a working relationship like the one I have with Matthew. Learning so much from each other, doing so many great things together that I feel that perhaps this is one opportunity that I have to make you know that. Bill Wiseman, so many great things that we did together. Thank you. Leslie Emery. With, I mean, singing with Leslie is an amazing experience. Shabbat after Shabbat. Marvin Polanski who taught me virtually everything I know about the audio. Tell Mathuras, it's great that you're here because your story skills are amazing. You see, so many things we have around our lives. So many people. But sometimes we don't stop to say how great they are. We don't stop to bless them. We don't stop to plant a seed of blessing on their lives. So my challenge for each one of you today is to be inspired by this partial. And even with all your challenges that we know that all, we all have, everything that is going around, stop. Appreciate the people in your life and let them know how much you appreciate that they are part of your existence. Plant a seed of blessing. Shabbat Shalom.